Here's something different I've been playing with recently. Wooden jigsaw puzzles. A laser cutter can produce any pattern you like. So the challenge is to design piece shapes that make a fun puzzle. Not too easy, not too hard. But mostly, I'm looking to make designs that are visually interesting. I came up with a simple algorithm in which an initial grid is partitioned into rectangular pieces. This 5x5 five five example has 25 pieces. Then we start randomly choosing a cell to grow into its neighboring piece. There are a few simple topological checks the algorithm makes, like to be sure the growth won't somehow split a neighboring part into two. So the number of pieces never changes from what I initially choose. I let the algorithm run a few thousand iterations to create intertwined fingers. Here's another example, a 10 by 10 grid to make a 100 piece puzzle. I can design an easier or harder challenge by picking the number of pieces. Territory is exchanged back and forth, but the algorithm keeps track of the area of each piece to block changes that would result in any growing very large or shrinking too small. And I can make the pieces either simpler or more jagged by choosing the resolution of the underlying grid. In this example, I'm using a finer grid to give the pieces long fingers that interlock tightly. I can laser cut any of these patterns just as they are and have a worthy puzzle with a kind of graph paper aesthetic. But that's just the first step. The real fun is step two, using a geometric transformation to warp things. Any underlying grid of pieces can be distorted infinitely many ways just by typing in a simple formula. I remap the x and y coordinates to new values, bending the unit square. When I apply the mapping to the puzzle pieces, the resulting curve design is more fun to assemble. For example, this simple function, p over 1 plus the magnitude of p, scales the point p radially by a factor that depends on how far it is from the center. It distorts the grid and its boundary in a smooth, organic way, softening the strict rigidity of the xy grid. When we apply this transformation to a puzzle, the curved framework and varying piece widths give the design a more dynamic character. It's fun to solve this puzzle and match the piece shapes, even this cardboard test without an image on it. Unlike traditional jigsaw puzzles, it's easier to start this one at the center than at the edges. You start by looking for the fattest pieces. A variation on that idea is to warp the square into a perfect circle. For this wooden puzzle, I laser etched concentric circles spaced in a geometric series to give a sense of tree rings. And here's a related warping, but it's restricted to an interior circle, leaving the outer square boundary fixed. This was inspired by some op art paintings of Victor Vazzarelli. And here's a hundred piece puzzle cut with that pattern. Here's a warping function that makes the corner angles more acute. For this puzzle, I hand colored the wood based on a drawing by the 19th century naturalist Ernst Haeckel from his book Art Forms in Nature. With sine or cosine functions, it's easy to code up some nice wiggly grids. Even a very slight curve can give visual interest. Here's a simple puzzle I made that's illustrated with a laser etched drawing by Picasso. It's only 80 pieces, but quite challenging to put together. It's easy to code up all kinds of warping functions to try. Mathematicians immediately think of Mobius transformations because they're conformal, which means that even though the lines curve and stretch, angles remain unchanged. So the corners here are still 90 degrees. Here's a 100 piece puzzle based on a Mobius transformation. But I'll end by showing you this experiment. Let's take this photo of Bob Bosch and lower its resolution to a 48 by 48 grid for a 64 piece puzzle. I transformed the darker pixels of the image into larger holes in each cell and morphed it with the p over 1 plus the magnitude of p transformation that we saw earlier. Now we let the laser cutter patiently do its thing with the piece shapes and also with the 2304 little squarish holes. I made a special vacuum grip sanding table to keep the pieces still when I sand off the smoke marks. Finally, the fun comes. I get to take it apart and reassemble it. And voila! I call it Bob over 1 plus the magnitude of Bob.